welcome back. So in this video series, what we're looking at is we're looking at some basic statistical calculations. In one of the previous videos, we looked at measures of central tendency, that being our mean, median, and mode. In this series, what we're going to look at, uh, the next part, is we're going to look at uh, measures of variability. In essence, variability in statistics tells us something about the spread of scores. So let's remember the data set that we're working with. Uh, so here we have a, a sample of data from recent graduates from a college or university, and they were asked on a one to five scale uh, their satisfaction with their experience at the, at the university. Uh, so from one being weren't satisfied at all to five being extremely satisfied. And if you remember from, the, from one of the other videos, what we did is we have our five data points, and what I recommended is if you're doing this by hand, that you reorder your data, uh, especially to calculate those measures of central, central tendency. With a small data set, that's very easy. Uh, with much larger data sets, there are computer applications that allow us to do this. But by working it by hand, we really get a, a, a foundational base of understanding how statistics works. So we're going to continue to work this example problem by hand. And today, we're going to look at those measures of variability or spread of scores. One of the first measures of variability that we're going to look at is what's called the range. And in essence, range is going to look at the minimum and maximum. Okay, So we have the min and we have the max. And there's a couple ways uh, that I often tell students that we can report range. The first is we can just report the raw, very, raw numbers for min and max. So in this case, our maximum is 5 and our minimum is 2. So 5 and 2. Or you can report range as the difference between the, between the two of those. So in essence, 5 minus 2 is 3. You could report the range either way here. Our next measure of variability beyond range is going to look at variance. And variance is going to be used to then calculate standard deviation. And so our formula for, I mean, for, for variance, which is s squared, is going to be the sum of the differences squared divided by n minus 1. Now, don't be freaked out by this formula. Uh, when you first see it, it looks awfully complicated. But as we work through it in steps, you're going to see that it's extremely manageable. And so what we're going to do is we're going to first calculate this value right here, our sum of the, of the differences from the mean squared. So in order to be able to do that, we've got to take our, our raw data right here. We've got 5, 4, 4, 3, and 2. And we're going to be calculating sums for each of these. Remember, the sum of our raw data was 18. And then we're going to calculate our differences from the mean first. OK, that is our, that's our first step. So in essence, and if you remember, our mean was 3.6. So 5 minus, 5 minus 3.6 is 1.4. 4 minus 1.6 is 0 0.4. So we have 0 0.4, 0 0.4 minus 0.6, and then negative 1.6. Interestingly enough, and you can always check your math to make sure uh, here that, you're, that, uh, you're, that your calculations are correct, is if this value right here should always add up to 0. If it doesn't, then one of your calculations is off. And in our next step, then we're just going to square each of these values. So the sum of the differences squared. And so here we're going to come up with 1.4 squared should be 1.96. 0.4 is 0 0.16, so 0 0.16. And our negative 0.6. A negative times a negative is going to be a positive, so 0.36 and then positive 2.56. If we add all of these values up, we should come up with 5.2. That 5.2 is going to be this value right here, all right, the sum of our differences from the mean squared. So in essence, in order to be able to calculate s squared, what we need is we need that 5.2 value divided by our n minus 1. In this case, our n 
is 5 minus 1 would be 4. So 5.2 divided by 4, if my math is correct and you can check my math, we should get 1.3. So we would say that our variance or our S squared value is 1.3. Now in order to get our standard deviation, our standard deviation is just S. So in essence, all we need to do is we just need to take the square root of this variance. So we need the square root of 1.3. And the square root of, of 1.3, and again, you can, you can check my math here, should be 1.14. So as we look at uh, all of this work that we've done, uh, we've been able to calculate range, We've been able to calculate our variance, and we've been able to calculate standard deviation. And now we're getting a much better picture as far as the spread of scores. And what you might often see as we finish up here is that these two values taken together, what you might see reported uh, in a report, for example, is that our average score for uh, satisfaction of graduating seniors, we might see it actually written as... 3.6 plus or minus, and you'll often see the standard deviation reported there. So instead of saying that the average score of satisfaction of our graduating seniors is just 3.6, oftentimes what people will do is they'll report the, that range, and they'll report it as the average score of those graduating seniors of satisfaction of their experience was 3.6 plus or minus 1.4, which tells us not only what the mean was, but also a bit about the spread of scores around that mean. So that's a bit of a review on uh, on standard deviation, variance, and range, which gives us our uh, variability. So stick around. Uh, if any of those concepts are confusing, you can go back and review the video on measures of central tendency. Uh, take a look at this video again on variability, and in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at confidence intervals. Thank you.